Stories with unexpected twists and turns seem to be all the rage these days. But what about a story where even the writers don't know what's coming? Welcome to The Story Symphony, the collaborative fiction podcast where each chapter of the story is written by an entirely different person. You, the listener, won't have any idea what to expect next. And neither will we, the writers. So strap in and let's see where The Story Symphony will take us today. You're listening to Chapter 1, When It Rains, by none other than myself, your host, Adrian Young. And here we go. I really hope this rain lets up soon. That's Martina, the barista at my local cafe. Now you may be wondering why I chose to begin this story in the middle of what may seem like quite an ordinary setting. But the weather recently has been anything but ordinary. Unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that for the last 21 days it's been raining non-stop across the city, and it's all anyone's been able to talk about. And have you noticed that the weather reporters have given up trying to explain what's causing the rain? People are outraged it's the middle of summer. Yeah, well, luckily Vanessa and I are leaving for Sri Lanka tonight. We're actually on our way to the airport right now. It'd be good to get away from this miserable weather. And if it never ends, we might even decide not to come back. Lucky. What have you been up to? Oh, uh, you know, the usual. I graduated last week. Again? How many degrees do you have now? Seven. This is my first master's, though. Poor Martina. Came out of uni in 2037 with a medical degree and absolutely no job prospects. She went back and studied law, advertising, and even graphic design, which, as we all know, are not fields that hire a lot of humans these days. Well, at least we don't have to pay a cent. And why not? We've got nothing better to do. Yeah. Well, good luck out there, Kyle. Thanks, Martina. Driving to the airport is not going to be a fun task. There's been reports of road closures all over the city, but I am not going to let a spot of rain ruin our trip, even if it's, well, more than a spot of rain. You're soaked. Cannot wait to get out of this godforsaken city. Oh, also, got your jam donut. No thanks. You can keep that. I haven't been dieting this hard all summer just for you to ruin my bikini bod right at the last minute. <laughs> all right, suit yourself. We'll see how long you last with those continental breakfasts. When in Rome. Yeah, or when not in Melbourne. It's almost pitch black out there. You know, I feel like I can barely remember what sunshine is. Oh, tell me about it. We will probably completely melt as soon as we step off the plane. Hmm. Oh, hey, I think the news has started. Our top story tonight, counter-terrorism officers have raided the headquarters of the terrorist organisation called the Firefighters. With the arrest of over 20 members, Victorian police are calling the operation a success and are confident that the group will no longer pose a threat to the public. The firefighters are, of course, the notorious group of organised arsonists who have been setting fire to parks and buildings all across the city over the past few months. Their motives at this stage still remain unclear. You're going to love the resort I've booked. Oh, I'm so excited. Kyle, I've been meaning to ask, was it expensive? Mm, no, not at all. No, no. It was, it was so much cheaper than a trip into state. Hmm. Okay. What she's really asking is how I could afford to book a spontaneous trip to Sri Lanka. I left uni a year ago as a fully qualified teacher with absolutely no job prospects. With schools being so few and far between these days, I haven't even been called in for an interview despite applying for pretty much every opening in the state. It's not like it took me completely by surprise. The rise of the virtual classroom has been many decades in the making after all, and I was explicitly told by everyone not to pursue a career in teaching before going to uni, but everyone also says follow your dreams, so here we are. In the meantime, I've gone back to my old job as a personal trainer. Sure, the invention of negative calorie food has led to virtually no one going to the gym these days, but there's a handful of more naturalistic people who still believe in working towards their fitness, and they're the type who usually pay well. It pays the bills and, combined with my fast eroding savings, the occasional overseas trip. Now 
turning to politics, Toby Jacobson has officially confirmed that he will be running for re-election as President of Australia. If successful, Mr Jacobson will enter his fifth term in office, making him the longest serving president this country has ever seen. However, polls are showing increased voter dissatisfaction in the policies that he and his party, the Paramount Australia Party, are pursuing. I booked this trip as a surprise for Vanessa only last week. The horrible weather definitely played a part, but what really drove the decision was Laura's death. We were in Vanessa's kitchen preparing lunch. She was using her 3D printer to make a negative calorie mud cake. I've got to say, it can be really hard to continue being a die-hard fitness freak when modern technology makes it possible to wolf down an entire mud cake for lunch and still have room for dessert. She left the room to take a call from an unknown number and came back in less than two minutes later, silent and expressionless. Who was that? She stared at me for a moment, then turned to check on the printer without saying a word. Vanessa, are you okay? Yeah, I'm... That was my friend Laura's mum. I'm not sure if I told you about Laura. Your family friend, right? Hmm. Anyway, she died this morning. She said it so matter-of-factly it took a few moments to sink in. Wait, What? God, that... what happened? Apparently she was hit by a truck while she was driving and died at the scene. That's... I don't know what to say. Vanessa was sitting on the other side of the kitchen bench, looking out the window. In between us lay a phone, an innocuous-looking block of metal and software that had been the bearer of heart-rending news only moments earlier. Kyle... They want me to go and clear out her room, but I can't. I just can't. Can you come with me? Yeah, of course. So we spent the rest of that Saturday afternoon in the bedroom of a dead stranger. And when I say we, I really mean me. Vanessa said that she was too emotional to go through Laura's things, instead waiting outside the apartment building and leaving it all up to me. We had been instructed to pack up everything that had sentimental value for the family and take the rest to an op shop. What is value? Everything in this room mattered in some way at some time to Laura. The rusty jewellery box on her desk that looked like a childhood possession. The bass guitar with missing strings in the corner lightly covered in dust. The driver's license sitting on top of her purse identifying someone that no longer existed. The new pair of jeans still with the price tag attached. Do those count as a dead person's clothes? All things that once mattered a great deal to someone, but not anymore. Standing in the middle of the room much later, after I'd emptied the closets, removed all the furniture and cleaned the floor, it struck me how quickly it had taken me to scrape someone's existence clean off the planet, all ready for the next tenant to move in. The rest of the unwanted stuff I put in the trash. I thought about leaving on the curb for others, but it had begun to rain heavily, and it has not stopped since that day. Spider-Man! debuts in cinemas tomorrow. The film marks the 80th release in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. To celebrate, Norway has announced that it will be officially observing Comic-Con Day, joining 36 other countries around the world in adding it to their national public holiday calendars. Vanessa had been sitting in silence for a few minutes. What's on your mind? I was just thinking about the people who were trapped in that apartment building. The one the firefighters attacked last week. Oh yeah, that was so horrible. I thought you might have been thinking about Laura. She doesn't respond. She's been really distant ever since Laura died, and yet I haven't seen her show any outward signs of grief. Do you um, want to talk about it? I mean, we haven't really spoken about it. No, it's alright. Okay. It's just, you've been really quiet ever since. You haven't really told me anything about Laura. I'm fine, really. Have you heard from her boyfriend? Who, Paul? No, I I haven't. When I was cleaning out Laura's room, I saw a framed picture of Laura and Paul by the bedside table. I had stopped to look at it for a good minute because I was struck by what a mismatched couple they seemed to be. She was standing side onto the camera in a bright red coat hands around his neck as she leans in for a kiss with a blissful smile on her face. 
He was in a plain grey shirt, arms falling stiffly by his sides and smiling awkwardly into the camera. Seems kind of strange to me, really. I would have thought he would have been the one to take responsibility of her stuff at the very least. I really don't know. I just want to put it out of my mind, to be honest. Yeah, okay, okay. The rain stopped. She was right. It was like someone had violently shut off whatever giant hose had been directing its wrath at the earth. Visibility on the road ahead, which had been distorted by thick bullets of rain, was now completely clear and slowly being illuminated by the sun as it began to reclaim the afternoon sky. Even more noticeable, though, was the sun quietness that had replaced the gentle roar of rainfall that had become ever-present noise over the last three weeks. Well... That's it. Problem solved. Looks like we don't need to flee the country anymore. (laughs) There is no way I am not getting on that plane. She seemed suddenly back to her usual cheery self, like a glimpse of the sun had instantly provided her with whatever serotonin she'd been missing. She's the funny one in our relationship. Vanessa is wittier, wiser and more warm-hearted than I could ever hope to be. That's why I have a daughter from the moment I met her. For her... That love was a little less instantaneous in developing, but here we are. Well, here we are. The airport was packed, notably with more people looking like they were departing rather than arriving. The floor was adorned with thousands of muddy footprints. The rain may have stopped, but the earth certainly had not dried. I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, okay, I'll I'll wait here. Don't miss me too much. Vanessa and I met in a decidedly uncool setting as members of opposing debating teams while at uni. The topic of the debate at which we met was automation in the workplace. I was on the affirmative team, which, in hindsight, was a bit ironic given my, shall we say, career development? Unlike most couples, we bonded over the things we both disliked. We both have no interest in politics, we both get freaked out by horror films, we both can't stand spiders, and we both hate sun-dried tomatoes with a passion. By the time I worked up the courage to ask her out, I was already hopelessly infatuated with her, waiting for a response which took what felt like an eternity while we both stood outside her apartment building. I was struck by how all my hopes, fears, aspirations and uncertainties could be so unequivocally focused on just one single person. I'm lying at the front of the airport, or what used to be the airport. The entire place was on fire. There was no doubt about it. This was the work of the firefighters. My head was a bit sore, but otherwise I felt fine. I got to my feet and took a look around. Menacing, black smoke filled the sky above, while on the ground there were hordes of terrified people charging in all directions. Some were grappling with their suitcases, Others had given up on them entirely, except one. One person stood out from the rest, standing in the middle of the road, gazing up at the raging fire that was consuming the airport. It took me a few moments, but it slowly dawned on me that I recognized who it was. It was the bright red coat that gave it away. Laura. Today's chapter was written by yours truly, the creator of this podcast. So I'm Adrian, a Melbourne-based marketing professional with a passion for creating things. That's why you're listening to this podcast. I also run Centre Thought, an online publication that produces well-informed content for young Australians by young Australians. I enjoy reading classics and political memoirs, but my favourite books of all time would have to be the Just series by Andy Griffiths. I love his lighthearted narrative style, and reading these books as a kid is what first truly inspired me to want to become a writer. So who knows what's going to happen next? Well, we certainly don't, but I'm just as excited as you are to see where the next writer will take us. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Story Symphony to stay up to date with all the latest news and goss, and to let us know what you think about the story so far. 
Kyle was voiced by actor and comedian Angus Brown, who you can find on Twitter and Instagram at Gus Gus Brown or on Facebook at Angus Brown Comedy. Vanessa was voiced by actor Maddie Tyres, who you can find on Instagram and Twitter at Maddie Tyres. Martina was voiced by Leanne Miyako, who is also the brilliant mind behind the artwork for this podcast. She's also an incredible baker, and you can see her mouth-watering creations by following her on Instagram at Leanne Bakes Things. The news presenter was voiced by myself, actually, believe it or not. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the Adrian Young. Until next time.